Hey everyone, we're doing a big supercharger test. I don't think anything has been done like this before. We have six cars, all with varying uh, battery packs where we're testing the new 150 kilowatt peak charge profiles on the cars. We have two X with 100 kilowatt hour packs. One is on 2019.12.1.1. The other one is on dot two. So we'll see if there's any differences in dot one versus dot two. We have two Model 3 long range packs with uh, the newest software, dot two on them, 2019.12.1.2. Um, and then we have a Model S 75 kilowatt hour pack. And we heard that the charge profiles were updated on that one. We're gonna see if it makes a difference. So if you don't wanna go through all of our testing procedures, we're gonna film everything, how we set this up, making sure the batteries were warm, we're not sharing any cabinets at the supercharger. We'll put a, a time in the description. You can jump to that to watch the charging profile video itself, which will be towards the end of this. But for now, we have all the cars around 30%, and we're gonna go drive a loop around the highway, cars navigating to the supercharger. That way, on route battery warm up, all the batteries should be ready to accept max charge rate, plugging everything in at 5% going to 90. So, everyone ready to go? Yeah! Absolutely! All right, let's do it. So Casey has a Model X P100D where he's gonna be able to show us the exact um, temperature of the battery pack, of course, by putting it in Ludacris Plus. And so let me zoom in on that here. Now max supercharging typically is around 30 degrees Celsius. So we're gonna be just over that with where the car is. That's closer to 40, yep. So that should be good. Um, if anything, the cooling fans will kick on, but I'm not worried about it, so. And this was using uh, navigate the, the on-route warm-up. Okay, so that was using on-route warm-up. So maybe they bumped that up to 40 degrees. So that's, that's awesome that the cars are nice and toasty for charging. We're getting off uh, exit ramps and then getting back on at full power and this is a good way to heat up the battery pack so we'll see if the little three can keep up with the P100DX. Definitely not. <laughs> that is just so fast. Incredible. Okay, Ruby just pulled in. We are at 6% on my car, although I think I got it a little bit warm, so I'm gonna let it sit. And uh, we got the fans running because we were ripping it so hard. So we're gonna let this just cool down for a little bit. And uh, it's actually updating to 29.12.1.2 right now. And we're gonna just run all three cars, all three Model 3s with this software. Um, uh, two from five to ninety percent and then Ben's car we're gonna run from about thirty percent up and uh, The reasoning for that is we want to see if the cabinets are getting hot or the charge handles getting hot or the cars hitting some kind of thermal limits and see if we can actually get higher speeds at higher state of charge um, So we'll have three model threes on the same newest software on this test right now, which is great All right, we got the model s 75 D on arachnids, this is Ben's dad's car. What percentage are you at, sir? 5% exact. exact. Okay, Just perfect. Ticked over. Okay, awesome, that's great. Okay, here comes the dual motor long range Model 3 back from its driving loop. What percent are you at? Six. Six, perfect, very cool. And you drove it kind of hard so everything's nice and toasty? I drove it like a stool. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so to make sure we get consistent charging speeds, we're gonna measure the cable on each stall to get an idea of the handle temperature because that is something that will limit charging speeds in the car. So I've got my assistant Johnny here. So here's the situation. We have everyone here. All the cars are at five, six, seven percent. We're running the heaters in the car that are a little bit higher. My car is finishing the software update, so we'll have two Model 3s on the newest software update doing a full five percent to ninety percent charge. We'll have the X's both on the newest update as well. And um, It'll be interesting to see. I'm really hoping we don't see variation in the charging profile of the threes. I think that's what I'm mostly interested in seeing um, because then we know we'll have a fairly consistent test uh, across multiple cars with this newest update. So fingers crossed that we get this all right. Everything's warm. We just checked the 
charge cable temperature on all the superchargers. Everything's pretty much ambient or below. And um, we're all going to plug in on separate cabinets. The supercharger is pretty much empty right now. And uh, it's going to be pretty great. So here we go. All right, good to charge. All right, so even though officially the 75D, according to the internet, is not an improved charge rate, we are currently getting, on this, this is a 2016 December build, 107 kilowatts. That is about as, I mean, that's the highest I've ever seen. Previously, these cars would do just under 100 kilowatts, but they would never quite hit 100, and, and now we're doing 110, it looks like, even. But we're going to plug in Ben's Model 3, which is how many percent? Like 30? We're uh, like 29 percent. Okay, 29, 30 percent. Um, and, and the reason we're doing this is because we think that one of the charge curve limitations could be that the handle or the cabinet, something in the supercharger equipment could be getting it hot. It's just a theory. We don't know, but this is how we're going to test it. So for reference, this Model 3 on the new update, it's been pulling high power this whole time. Its charge handle, you know, that you grab is about 155 degrees and the cable is about 140 degrees. And the ambient here is, I think, 72 degrees. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, it's nice. And so we'll see if we're starting with fresh temperatures and a fresh cabinet. If it tapers if later. We'll get a better taper at the end. Because that will be significant for road trips to that know. That will, yeah. Because cool. last time they were very close together and heat could have been part of that. Sure. Well, let's give it a go. Yeah, one of the things we're wondering about is the actual physical distance from the supercharger cabinet. Chris's Model 3 had the highest charging rate and it's the closest one to the cabinet. Now those high voltage, high current cables that run from the cabinet to the Ballards, those are not inexpensive. Uh, the contractor is not gonna run extra cable and waste any length. They're gonna make them as short as possible. So it's gonna be a good 100 feet more from Chris's Model 3 to Kyle's Model 3 here. So the voltage drop through the cable could be significant over that extra 100 feet. That could be a couple volts more. Absolutely, absolutely. So that'll be interesting to see if the charge... Could affect the charge curve. Right, oh, absolutely, oh. yeah. That's a good, good point. 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120, 130, 140, 145, baby, 145. <laughs> Holy, instantly. I mean, like within milli um, 30 seconds of plugging in, it's at 145. Ruby is at 70% pulling 80 kilowatts. But Casey's at 69, pulling 73. <laughs> so Interesting. That's seven kilowatts different. <laughs> right. So there's a slight. They've, they've drifted a little bit. Right. Here. Well, they are still on different software. So this one's on dot one. Dot one. This one's on dot two. Dot two. Okay. Plus his battery was probably even hotter than. Um, than Ruby. Right, Ruby. Yeah. He'd been driving straight up from Charleston. Right. No. Although I would say I think yours probably well, at I, prime time. Yeah, I would say ours was plenty warm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because you were his charged fans up. fans got noisier sooner. Right. Ruby's fans were quieter for at least about another five to ten minutes. So I think what we should do is once Ruby gets the software update right. that this car is on, yeah. we should come back plug right. it into the same stall, right. same conditions, and then see if it matches this charging profile. That way we have one of each. Okay guys, so we're just wrapping up our tests here at the Raleigh Supercharger. Thanks to our Tesla Model X journey, Don and Marianne and Johnny coming along with their Model X. Casey Green, who does supercharger yeah, reviews, who's going to be doing a review. His goal is every yeah. supercharger in North America with his Model X P100D. So thanks to him, he drove all the way up from Charleston, South Carolina, a five, six hour journey just to come do this test with us tonight because he had the software on his car. And then, um, of course, thanks to Ben, my awesome girlfriend, Alyssa. Everyone was very patient. It's well after midnight and uh, we're just wrapping up to go home. I'm going to pull an all-nighter, edit this video together, 
We're gonna get back in just a little bit with our final thoughts, Ben and I, once we review the data of um, how each car performed and some of our key takeaways. Right now, the general idea we are gleaming from this is that the last test we did is pretty representative of the turn speed. You, I agree. We've got three Model 3s and they all seem to be roughly about the same speed, so I agree. not a short shortening on the 5 to 90 range. Right, and we'll, we'll get all the so. data at the end of this video yep. in charts as well, so just hang tight. All right, guys, so in this clip coming up, we have all of the charging that we've done over the past couple days. There's a lot to look at, so I would recommend watching maybe each individual car. A couple things I want to point out to you. Um, the Model 3s with the newer update all charged within the same range, so there are some variables um, that are sort of out of our control, whether it's from the supercharger or the car, we did our best to make sure everything was at the same temperatures across all of our tests. And um, I don't think there was a way we could get more accurate without having internal data to Tesla vehicles. The Model S 75D has been uncorked in terms of charging. We're getting 113 kilowatt peak on that car, which is up from about 98 kilowatt is all we saw before. So that's incredibly impressive. We also believe that the 90 kilowatt hour packs have been upgraded as well, and we're expecting probably high 120s, low 130 uh, kilowatt charging speeds on those. Um, so the, the one thing to keep in mind is that the Model Xs are going to charge longer because they're larger battery packs but look at the amount of kilowatt hours uh, put into the battery over a certain period of time. It's really impressive what the 100 packs can do with this charging profile. And I think a Model S 100D with the uncorked charging may just be the perfect road trip car. Um, it's pretty incredible. So again, it's a lot of data in here. Do with it what you will. We just wanted to present it all to you in, in the most factual way that we possibly could and, and in the most standardized way as well. And then we'll touch base afterwards and talk a little bit about um, our exact thoughts and reactions. It's 3.30 in the morning on that test, so sorry we're tired. You can see Blue over here is sleeping, and Ellie's going to sleep as well. So it's a late night here at our house.
looking at all those tests, we've, we've really gathered a lot of charging data um, with the new charging profiles on the car. Now, I expect this to change and go over time, but a couple things that I'd like to point out are, one, I believe Tesla is not comfortable with high charging rates at high state of charge. You'll notice all the cars start tanking around mid 40% and we're not charging you know, near or over 100 kilowatt, close to 50%. So that's really interesting, something different than we've seen from the three V3 charging profile. You'll notice we didn't put Ben's cars um, video in there from today. And the reason we did that was purely just for a test on our own. We started a supercharging test on his car at 30% to see if maybe something was getting hot in the cabinets or the handles, and that's why it was doing it, because we're starting all the way at 5%, I should say tapering early, but um, no, that car actually tapered even earlier doing it that way. Um, the car did sit a little bit longer, but probably not enough to get um, really cold because it still achieved 147 peak uh, kilowatt charge rate when we did plug it in. But, but I don't think that was the reason it tapered. I think this is a very much a conservative charging profile from Tesla at high state of charge. Um, You'll notice we included yesterday's test, or two days ago rather, where we did 2019.8.5, which is the 120 kilowatt charging profile versus the new one. And you'll notice from 5% to 90%, again, there isn't much difference at all if your car is warm, etc. I think en route battery warm up is going to be a, uh, a lifesaver in cold climates, especially. It's going to eliminate people having to do the yo-yo all the time. And with so many new owners, they won't even know what supercharging temperatures, blah, 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 all this stuff is. So I think that's a really great improvement. But if you're warm and you go from five to 90%, we're not seeing a big difference yet uh, because the, the newer cars tend to crash a little bit harder uh, in their charging profile at high state of charge. So I think if Tesla can work on that, that's gonna be a huge um, benefit. We'll definitely be reporting on all of those. So subscribe to our channel. Every time there's a supercharger update, we're gonna be testing it. We'll report on it just like this. This one's one of the larger tests we've done, but we appreciate everyone coming to help. This was uh, definitely a lot to put together and um, hopefully we learned something from it. We certainly did. We learned temperature was not a factor in our tests from the other day. And we also learned that Model X's are awesome when it comes to supercharging for road trips. So I um, hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you next time.